for any real project, obviously, we're going to want to have specific window values and products uh, used. And so let's take a look in this, this video at a couple different ways that we can assign those parameter values. So, so how do we assign a specific uh, U-value and SHGC or G-value to our individual window elements here? Um, and of course, as with all things, there are lots of ways that you can do it. So we'll we'll sort of look at a couple of different couple of different methods. So first of all, let me come into my Grasshopper definition here, and um, let's look at using the native Honeybee tools first before we turn our attention to the Passive House tools uh, options. So I'm in here in my definition, and I'm going to zoom in on the part that we just built where we added some apertures to our first floor. So remember we added or referenced in the geometry here from our, our first floor that we, we just added to the Rhino model. And um, notice that on the aperture constructor, so this is the native Honeybee aperture constructor, and notice here that we have an input for energy plus construction type. So the native Honeybee tools are going to use these energy plus constructions in order to set all of these types of values. So let's look at how we can use those energy plus options to assign some values here to our construction, some custom values. So I'm going to come up here to my Honeybee Energy ribbon. So my Honeybee, Honeybee Energy ribbon. And in the Honeybee Energy ribbon, of course, we have this one, uh, one constructions option. And in the constructions, this is where I can build things like window or glass materials. I can build whole window constructions, etc. So if I want to build a custom window, this is the these are the tools or these are the components that I'm going to use to do that in the native Honeybee uh, uh, methods. So first of all, let's uh, let's drop this Honeybee window construction component onto our canvas. This is what we're going to use to actually create a custom window construction. So let's drop this guy onto the canvas here and notice that the output is going to be a construction. So for whatever we build, we're going to have an output as a construction. This construction is going to feed into my construction input here and get applied to all of the windows in this uh, in this case. So what do we need? Well, we're going to need to input a name. So let's give it a name to start. We'll call this uh, Ed's, whoa, Ed's custom uh, window. And we'll give that as the name. And then also, of course, we're going to need some materials, a list of materials in the construction from exterior to interior. Now, there's two ways that we can build this. Uh, if we were to come up here to constructions, notice that we can build things. We can build window assemblies using individual glass and uh, gap materials. That would be one method if you if you really want to dial in and, and build the construction there. Um, uh, usually for almost all the projects we're working on, you're gonna, I, I would recommend using the simplified uh, Honeybee window material instead. This is a simplified input that allows us to input just the U-value and SHGC. So rather than building that from a series of glazing cavities and glass materials, um, I think it's going to be a lot easier to just use this, un unless you're, I don't know, I, I'm sure there are instances where you would want to use use. Uh, the complex buildup. But for our purposes, I think the simplified buildup is going to work just fine. And so I've got my window material here. And notice the window material takes in only name, U factor, SHGC, and the visibility factor. OK, so let's put those in. So let's call this, let's call it Ed's custom, oops, custom material, material. So we'll give that as the name, and then let's give it a U factor. Let's just, for purposes of argument, let's give it one. Let's say we have a U factor of one, pretty good. And this SHGC, or G value of 0.4. Um, I know the SHGC and the G value are not actually the same thing, but for our purposes in this video, let's just um, consider them the same thing. They're pretty close. And notice I don't have to give it a TVIS. Um, that'll get assumed. The default there is 0.6 if we don't supply it any information. So as soon as we give it the SHGC, uh, notice this is now working. We now have a material. Let's take a look at what we get. So out the out the uh, the uh, output here, we have a new material. Ed's custom material it has a U factor and SHGC and a VT. Uh, so that's great. 
we can now take this material and feed this material into my materials list for my uh, Ed's custom window construction. And notice Ed's window construction now has a single layer, single material uh, with the vector SHGC. This is a good, easy, simplified way to create a window element or a custom window construction. And of course, to use this, to use this on any of our window apertures, I'm just going to take this construction output and feed it into my window or aperture component. So I take the construction output and I feed it into my EP construction. That's going to flow through. So now that is that construction, Ed's custom window, is getting applied to all of these windows. And that then flows through the rest of our process here, the rest of our conversion, all the way to the PHPP. And if we want to see that in the PHPP, I can boot up the PHPP and let's take a look at what our new PHPP with those with that revised assembly looks like. So as soon as that guy is booted up, let me open up the Excel here. And here we are in our components. Well, let me go shift over to Windows, first of all. Um, there we go, Windows. So in Windows, here's Ed's custom window, Ed's custom window, my honeybee window. I wonder what those are. Uh, one second. Okay, there we go. I don't know what that was all about. Uh, some funny artifact there. Anyway, it's working. And uh, so Ed's custom window is coming through. Here are all my surfaces, obviously still big ugly names. And we got all the sizes, their host, and then Ed's custom window is flowing through. And let's take a look at our components here just to see. Let's scroll over. So there's Ed's custom window. And Ed's custom window. And notice it has a G value or SHGC of 0.4, a U value of 1 watt per meter squared degree Kelvin. Notice here, so that's great. So, right, so we now have control over that assembly. If I was to come in here and change that in some fashion, let me come in here and let me set this to something different. We'll set this to 1.34. Right? Maybe we're using a different window. Uh, as soon as I set that, that's going to get, uh, we're going to create, recreate a new custom window material that flows through into the aperture, gets assigned to all the apertures, flows through the entire construction over to the PHPP. If I go to my PHPP, notice that has now rippled through and it's being been updated in the PHPP. Okay, so I can control all of this from my, my grasshopper scene, which is great. Notice here one thing though, the U value of the glazing is 1.34. The U value of the frame is 1.34. Well, that doesn't seem right, does it? In passive house modeling, we know that for PHPP, the, the, the certifiers want us to split out the glazing, the center of glass U value, from the frame U value. Those shouldn't be the same thing. However, in NFRC modeling protocol, North American Fenestration Rating Council protocol, which is uh, sort of what we're seeing here. In those cases, we have a single U factor, which is calculated for the entire window and applied sort of uniformly. And so one of the ways that we're adapting the NFRC parameters into the PHPP is by taking that single number and applying it to the glazing and the frame uniformly. Now, it's not going to be as accurate if we don't have center of glass U value and frame U value broken out, the best you can do is just apply that as a uniform U value to both. Obviously, that's not ideal, though. And so in all, almost all cases, uh, certainly if we're doing a certified passive house project, um, this would not be an appropriate way to, to work. Um, and so in those cases, we're going to need to input specific information for the center of glass separately from the frames. And of course, we're also going to want to input things like the psi value of the, of the uh, glazing edge and the psi value of the installation, none of which we can input here using these native Honeybee tools. Right? That's, that's not at all the process for NFRC modeling or Energy Plus modeling, which is, which is what we see represented here. So just keep that in mind. It's a very different protocol, a very different way of modeling, uh, and it's often quite hard to find equivalencies. So we've we've sort of created a, a reasonable estimate here um, in terms of overall heat loss. It would be um, reasonably well. It's as good as you can get from the NFRC mo uh, numbers. Let's say it that way. Um, you know, without additional detail, there's there's not much more you can do. But 
let's come back in the next, so hopefully that all makes sense. Let's come back in the next uh, video and let's look at another way we can do this. Let's look at a more detailed way that we can input a whole bunch of information and add that to our model so that it flows through into our PHPP in a more accurate and more detailed fashion, a, a method that would be more appropriate for something like a certified PassFiles project.